Thank you very much. Uh, and I think that was a great segue. Uh, thank you, Giant, because uh, it really uh, kind of imparted uh, the different sorts of frameworks and information that uh, you could really utilize to your advantage uh, when the time comes for you or uh, you plan to work and partner with any providers. So uh, my name is Matt McDonald. I'm a senior manager at Wolf & Company. And uh, what we do is uh, do risk management services for banks, healthcare systems, software companies, financial technology providers, and really everything in between, uh, you know, developing innovative opportunities, products, and services uh, to really bring them into the digital age. Uh, and really what we're going to be talking here today uh, is uh, how the NIST AI risk management framework, which is a new framework that was released at the beginning of the year, can be leveraged to companies to their advantage so that they can make sure that they're really evaluating the sustainability and the opportunities uh, utilizing and developing or artificial intelligence products and potential services. So for those of you that don't know, uh, the uh, the the NIST, uh, the National Institute for Standards and Technology has a lot of different frameworks that can be leveraged uh, to, to your advantage, and one of which is the NIST AI framework. And uh, if you don't mind, just going to the next slide. Uh, what we uh, are going to be talking about, next slide, please, uh, is going to be, uh, what is it? Uh, and really what that is, is, an, is a resource for organizations to design, develop, deploy, or utilize these AI systems and to manage that risk effectively so that the systems that they want to implement are going to be trustworthy and responsible use cases uh, at, and and opportunities that they can grow it and scale in their systems and their and their products. And really, what we want to make sure you understand when you think about this is uh, really three use cases. One of which is if you want to try to create a artificial intelligence product or service yourself, or you want to create any sort of autonomous robots or any sort of opportunities that, to roll it out internally in your systems. Uh, which in many cases uh, could be you. Uh, the other opportunity is if you plan to partner with providers and to implement these sorts of use cases into your systems, there's a sort of questions that you may want to be asking those providers about how they're creating sustainable, sustainable and trustworthy models uh, so that you get a sense of comfort on how uh, they are going to be uh, leveraged uh, in, in these, these uh, areas of, of review. Uh, the last and, and one I think we, we're going to be seeing a lot more is if you're going to be developing uh, vendor providers that you can implement into your systems and what is your due diligence process and your ongoing monitoring process for these vendor providers so that you're asking these sorts of questions. So how are they utilizing this sort of framework or other frameworks to their advantage so that you get a comfort or peace of mind in your due diligence process or your ongoing monitoring process that they are designing, developing, and deploying these systems uh, in your environment uh, in a way that you feel comfortable with and that you're managing those risks effectively. Uh, next slide, please. And if you uh, really take a look at this risk management framework, just like a lot of many different risk management frameworks, uh, the core functions that are going to be evaluated really start at governance, and that's inventorying and identifying the sort of risks that are going to be uh, posed by an AI system. And that's going to be across your entire infrastructure and across your entire uh, model for how you plan to deploy that process or that schema. And that's really kind of the basis of every risk management framework. Uh, and you're going to see that in a lot of other frameworks as well. Uh, what's great about the, the govern uh, the govern core function is that it really allows visibility into the risk management principles that you're looking to set out and to instill across your institution or to partner with another provider or to provide context with a vendor that you plan to utilize. And I think that's going to really uh, help set the stage, so to speak, on what's important when you plan to govern and utilize an AI system. Uh, the other functions is uh, mapping those controls uh, and those risks is understanding what are the interdependent risks related to that AI system and the core uh, the core functions uh, that you plan to utilize uh, when you plan to roll out that AI system. So maybe that's certain types of controls around business continuity planning, uh, allowing availability into your infrastructure. Uh, what happens if uh, the trustworthiness is broken down? Uh, how does secure software development occur? You want to make sure you really 
kind of acutely understand the, the different risks and threats that are associated when you plan to implement or deploy an AI system. And that's really kind of that second core function uh, in, in a risk management framework as it relates to an AI system. Uh, the last two here, measure and manage, it's almost like kind of a continuous cycle where you want to be considering how those different risks and threats are being controlled and measuring if those controls design effectiveness or operating according to the expectations that you've set on them. So there's different methodologies that you can utilize and different tools you can utilize to analyze and assess, benchmark, and monitor those risks. And uh, what you do once you've kind of established that benchmark and you have a process to measure it, you can manage any of the gaps that you're identifying to those benchmarks and be able to continuously improve and to scale uh, the, the, the controls that you've associated to those threats and to those risks. And uh, that's kind of really the funnel uh, for, for how a risk management framework uh, would, would be set out. And uh, it's no different than an artificial intelligence product platform or service. And uh, really, I think what's most important is that the threats that you're utilizing are going to be tied and associated to these four functions. Next slide, please. So I think the really the key takeaways here are is that you, you really have five areas that you want to make sure that you're going to be mitigating and managing uh, as effectively as possible. Uh, first and foremost, it's compliance with regulatory requirements. Whenever we talk about management frameworks and, and risk management frameworks, it's really like putting the, the, the horses in front of the cart. So the horses are going to be managing those threats and those risks and developing a framework that's going to uh, be able to do that in an efficient and effective manner. And what you're pulling along is, is going to be the, the regulation that you're hoping to eliminate any gaps to. Uh, secondly is ethical and responsible AI practices. You know, in this new day and age, we really all want to make sure that we're uh, developing these, these models and these systems in, in a way that is responsible to uh, our organizations and our systems. And of course, uh, risk mitigation and reputation management, if anything were to go wrong, uh, when you have a framework uh, that you're kind of using as a roadmap, it's really going to eliminate or, you know, reduce a lot of that risk associated uh, of course, competitive advantages when you have that roadmap as well, uh, I think you're going to be able to show as a partner or as a potential vendor provider that you uh, have a really clear uh, and well understood way of developing these systems that are going to make sense to a lot of the individuals that you have as clients or uh, potential stakeholders if you're doing something in house and that's always a, a great way to be able to explain that to board members or to committee members. And uh, lastly, organizational culture and sustainability. Uh, I don't think AI is going away anytime soon, and uh, we want to make sure people are really aware that we're doing this in a thoughtful and uh, precise manner and utilizing a framework to kind of keep yourself guardrailed and to show people that you have a serious take and serious approach on how to roll out these sorts of systems and pro programs is a, a really great way of establishing that. So uh, really, uh, just next slide, please. Uh, really just to kind of uh, off-ramp off here is uh, the bottom line is making sure that we have an inventory to determine what are those use cases and what are the threats and risks associated uh, to being clear on how you can support managing risks, utilizing those core functions we discussed uh, at the beginning of this talk uh, to make sure that your key risk management objectives are going to be met. Uh, utilizing the manage and measure, uh, uh, the manage and measure core functions so that you can continuously improve on any gaps that you're identifying to those benchmarks that you set. Uh, in in this in the earlier two stages, and uh, last but not least, just ensuring that uh, you report to the appropriate stakeholders on that progress to give people the peace of mind and the comfort that these are being rolled out in a sustainable and ethically responsible way. Uh, so that's it for us. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, just thanks again. I uh, just wanted to give you my information. If you had any questions or any thoughts, uh, I really appreciate everyone taking the time to come to my speed run on the uh, NIST AI risk management framework. Uh, we're always here for uh, a chat. Uh, we always love to talk to people that are getting involved in the space. So you really can't go anywhere without hearing uh, AI as a buzzword these days. And uh, I also want to thank SANS, of course, uh, for putting this uh, free summit together, which uh, is really a great advantage for a lot of people to uh, be able to get more acclimated to uh, the sorts of risks and, and, and uh, opportunities associated with AI. So thank you again, Rob, and I, I really appreciate the time.